Hey guys, Scott here and welcome to the Ultimate Huntress Guide. It's lame, but that's what I'm calling it. So I have like 800, at least 800 hours in Huntress alone, and I know just about everything there is to know about old Hummy Girl, so let's just get right to it. First, let's look at the Huntress's strengths and weaknesses. Now, if strength's obviously the first and most important one is she has a ranged attack. There is no other killer in Dead by Daylight that has the ranged attack as of right now. Um, nurse, you can kind of count it, but that's throwing her whole body, so I don't really count that. So, range attack, awesome. She can chuck them very fast, and she can always threaten at any distance, given an open area. Next, she can down survivors almost instantly at melee range by throwing a melee hatchet and then doing a melee swing. This is a whole technique we're going to cover later, but just know you can down people very, very fast with Huntress. Now, she has an extremely strong basement game as well, probably the second best in the game right under Leatherface. She can block the stairs and just keep chucking hatchets at people. So if there are injured people in, in the actual basement and they're trying to leave, you can just throw hatchets and they, they just can't leave. And then if there's actually an injured person, you can throw a hatchet at them, back up with them, and then melee them. Pretty much if someone's in the basement and you're at the stairs, no one can get out. Next, she's very strong against certain pallet loops. Now, it's not all pallet loops. Any pallet loop with low walls, and once they fix the uh, auto haven trucks, God willing, eventually in 2087, like, then she'll be really good on those loops as well. But there are a lot of loops in the game where she can actually throw hatchets over, negating the loop entirely. And there are some loops where she can't do anything except run around like every other kill in the game. But the fact that she can do something about some of them is an extremely good plus. She could also threaten hooks and totems from very far away just by having a ranged attack. So if you see a survivor dismantling your totem on a hill or you see, you know, someone getting hooked from very far away, you can still threaten them even if you're across the whole map. Next, she can actually zone people by just holding a hatchet. Zoning is pressuring people to go where you want them to go. So if they're in an open area and they have cover to their right, but that cover to the right is in a corner of the map where they eventually have no escape, you can pretty much pressure them to go there by keeping your hatchet out and making them run into cover. So even if you miss the hatchet, you put them into an area where they can't escape from. So the very threat of hatchets makes people go where you want them to go, which is really, really nice. She can also counter hook divers because she can just throw an ax and then melee pretty much before they get a chance to do anything. You can usually grab them off as they're actually beginning the grab animation to get the person off the hook. She also has the smallest I'm sorry, the second smallest terror radius in the game at 20 meters, which um, you know, Seems like not a big deal because she has a 45 meter hum, but it's actually surprising how close you can get before people realize you're that close. If you combine this with modern abuse, it's actually hilarious because you can sneak up on people with Huntress, which makes no sense. And finally for her strengths, she has the most, I think, rewarding gameplay in the game. No other killer has as much satisfaction as landing a cross map hatchet and just hearing the distant echo. It's just the best feeling in the world when you hit those. So I don't think any killer has as much like personal satisfaction as the Huntress. So mastering her is definitely worth it. Now, she's not the best killer in the game because she has some weaknesses. First of all, she's slow. She has 5% less move speed than most killers in the game, um, which is not so bad. But when you're getting pallet looped around things like the cow tree, it becomes noticeable. Um, next, she has to reload her power at lockers, which is usually not a big deal because if you're out of hatchets, the chase should be over by then, but still annoying. Uh, she has a giant humming radius, which we talked about earlier, which makes it very easy to hide from Huntress. This is probably one of her biggest weaknesses. Um, people are uh, given a very, very large warning that Huntress is coming, so it's very easy to hide against her, which is why I think Whispers is a required perk on her. Um, her base perks are awful. You should never use any of them. Um, even Huntress's lullaby may be on the Doctor build, but Rune is better in every way, so I don't know. Her perks are very bad. Uh, next, she's weak against pallet loops with high walls, so think like um, Colton Farm, um, you know, Larry's, things like that. Uh, any, any loops where the walls are very tall, she just pretty much has to run around like every other killer. And uh, finally, she's weak on very large maps too, due to her slow move speed and no movement based power. She actually has the worst map control in the game. She's the same speed as Hag, but at least Hag can teleport to traps and cover some distance faster. Huntress just runs everywhere, that's all she does. So, she has very, very bad map control. Um, but that's about it for weaknesses. Her strengths definitely outmaneuver her weaknesses, so that's why she's probably considered the third best killer in the game. Let's go over what perks to use now. Now, sadly, you'll never actually be using the Huntress's own perks because they range from, like, Deja Vu tier to Worst Ruin. To me, the three unarguable perks Huntress must use are Barbecue and Chili, Whispers, and Nurse's Calling. Barbecue and Chili not only gives you insane ma uh, map awareness, but Hunters can actually immediately damage people across the map, 
given enough practice with long-range shots. Between the damage potential, map awareness, and double blood points, there is pretty much no reason you should ever not have this perk. Whispers is also immensely useful in Huntress because she kind of has a hard time finding survivors. Her humming radius is absolutely massive, so the more timid survivors will hide with plenty of warning. Whispers counters this by telling you where they are instead of the other way around. Learning to use Whispers can be tricky, but it is one of the best perks in the game if you use it correctly. A Nurse's Calling is also immensely useful in Huntress because there are going to be a lot of injured survivors during your matches. Because her terror radius is only 20 meters, a Nurse's Calling actually kicks in before they can even hear your heartbeat, giving you kind of like a sonar location ping before they panic to stop healing when you close in. Additionally, a Nurse's Calling lets you straight up snipe people who are healing, and those that are self-caring are actually easier to hit, which is something I'll get into later. Now, the last perk slot is kind of up to you. I would recommend Hex Ruin, but it, you know, depending on your luck with Totem Spawn, something like a Remember Me or Blood Warden can work as well. The last slot should be either a game delaying perk or some type of end game perk, because Huntress has pretty bad map control. Next, let's talk about actually using her power effectively. The ideal situation at the start of a match is you use Whispers to find a hiding survivor who is in melee range. If you're ever within melee distance, you should almost never actually melee them if they're healthy, unless they're like right at a pallet. The first and probably most important thing you need to master as Huntress is landing melee hatchets. Because hatchet throws have a much smaller cooldown and you can still move, you know, compared to a melee swing, landing a melee hatchet almost guarantees a melee swing because seconds later you're catching up with a survivor as they speed boost from the damage. This means the survivor is almost instantly down from full health. Now, these can be just as hard to hit as cross map hatchets due to your limited FOV and the survivor's rapid movement in front of you as they try to juke it. Now, most bad to average survivors will try to spin around you, gaining no distance but making them harder to hit. The thing is, when you practice enough, you realize this strategy is terrible against Huntress because you're going to hit one of your five hatchets, and when you do, the survivor has absolutely no distance and is usually going to be granted a speed burst in a direction they don't actually want to be going because they're spinning around. It's almost always better to just try to run to the safety of a jungle gym or anything with high walls and just eat the ranged attack, unless you're obviously injured. Thankfully, most survivors want to try to do fancy spins around you, so it ends up working in your benefit quite often. Now, the trick to hitting survivors at close range is letting them come into your vision, not chasing them and forcing them into your sights. I would recommend putting like a piece of tape or some rough indicator at the center of your screen while you play Huntress, as this makes this tactic a lot easier. Instead of following the survivor as they rapidly move in and out of your field of view, just keep the center of your screen in one general area and wait for the survivor to juke back into it. When they do, just release the hatchet. It's a lot less to think about. This is far easier than just trying to quickly flick to the location of a survivor, although this is, you know, it's something you can do once you get better at Huntress. But if you're just trying to learn her, I would not recommend flicking because it's it takes a lot of practice. Additionally, you almost always want to hold your hatchet into a full charge at melee range, as it moves faster and generally causes the opponent to start trying to juke before you're, you know, they, they start juking before you've even begun thinking about letting the hatchet go, causing them to just lose ground and just waste time spinning around. At rank 1, this is how I hit the majority of my melee hatchets, and this, you know, is the most universally easy way to hit people. Now, as you begin to master Huntress, you can start flicking shots, and flicking is, you know, basically when you have perfect knowledge of your mouse sensitivity, so much so that you can instantly turn your camera to any point on demand. You know, even when I'm hitting flick shots, I'm still employing the wait for the survivor to juke back enemy method, and I only flick it when I see that they refuse to juke back to that center spot. Flicking looks cool, but it's generally riskier and should only be done when it's needed. Now, once the survivor's outside a roughly like 10 meter radius, you can no longer hit a melee hatchet to melee swing combo. At this range, an element of prediction comes into play, but it's a prediction you can influence with the environment. The strategy of keeping the center in one spot and waiting for the survivor to juke back into it still absolutely works here, although very good survivors will no longer fall for it at this range. At high rank, most survivors are smart enough to not run in a straight line against the Huntress. This can still work in your favor, however, because you know they're going to try to juke you. Most of the time I'm taking mid-range shots, I'm not even aiming at the survivor, I'm aiming at where I know they're going to try to juke to, at which point I just release the hatchet. In the open, this works against most players. However, extremely good survivors will go as far as to bait out your hatchets with probably the best type of mid-range juke you can do, which is like the fake turn. A fake turn is where the survivor, knowing that I want them to juke back into my shot, will turn as if they're going to return to the center only to immediately turn back and keep going the original direction. If survivors alternate between this and actually running back to the center, you know they're, you know, very good at dealing with a huntress. For these players, you need to be very smart. 
for example, a very good survivor will know I am waiting for them to find cover, at which point I'll throw a hatchet right before they get there. Knowing this, good survivors will actually juke and run away from cover, but even this is something you can predict. If you've seen the survivor is very good, basically you just do the opposite of what you think you should do. For example, this guy, I've gone against him a bunch of times, he's very good at dodging hatchets, so... It seems like he'd want to go to the right, because he's got the safety of the ironworks, he can go to the amazing window there. There's a pallet right here too, there's a lot of walls. But, I kind of assumed that that's where a player would want to go, because it's closer, and to the left is more of an open area until he gets to that one rock loop. So, knowing that the survivor is good, I know he's probably not going to take the easy path. He's going to go where there is less cover temporarily, so I predict he's going to go to the left instead, and I aim to the left before he even turns, and he turns right into it. So, there's definitely a lot of prediction, and you have to download the players as you're going against them, because every player dodges hatchets differently. So, most survivors will want to get to some type of safe area, like I said, as they're trying to dodge a hatchet. Bad to average survivors will run directly to the safe area, like a high wall, meaning you have a concrete idea of their path, and you can let it go right before they get to the cover, it's an easy shot. Average to above average survivors will run to a safe area, but they know that you know that they're about to be at a safe area, so they'll juke right before they leave your line of sight expecting a hatchet throw. For these players, you need to be patient and guess that they're going to try to juke you. Sometimes you might guess wrong and they get behind cover, it happens. But, you know, you're still moving closer with a fully charged hatchet, and they're under pressure, and will most likely run to the safe area after like one juke, which is when you throw the hatchet. Now, very good survivors know all of this and might actually run the opposite direction, usually into a far more dangerous area, because they know it's the least expected path. There is no way to predict these movements until you see how the survivor plays, or you know them from a previous game. So, the early stages of the match are very much downloading how each player adapts and dodges hatchets. Now, cross-map hatchet hits are what makes Huntress the most rewarding killer to play in the game, in my opinion. These shots require a perfect understanding of arc and travel time, but luckily survivors tend to not bother juking at such a long range because they don't even hear the hum at that point. This means that the shots are usually consistent to hit, but it also means you really, really need to understand how hatchets travel. There is no real way to explain this in any cheat-cheat sort of way, unfortunately. You eventually just, just get a feel for how the hatchets travel as you throw them. I'd recommend practicing with barbecue and chili. You know, every time you hook someone, if you see someone in the open across the map with barbecue and chili, just go for it, just throw one. By watching the arc of the hatchet and seeing where it lands in relation to the survivor, you get a better understanding of how they travel through the air. I kind of wish there was a better way to give tips on how to hit these shots, but it's literally just practice. There isn't much reading here, as most people will just kind of run in a straight line at massive distances, so it's, it's really just all on you practicing. Now, you're not always going to have a clear shot at someone. In fact, the whole core design of Hunters is literally doing everything you can to get a clear shot on someone. Just because you have a range attack doesn't mean you should whip out a hatchet every time you just barely see a survivor. Sometimes you have to get looped just like every other killer until you're close enough to swing the chase in your favor. First things first, unless the pallet loop has low walls or is narrow and straight, don't necessarily ready a hatchet every time a survivor runs through a pallet. This is probably the biggest mistake most Huntresses do. Sure, bad survivors will throw it down and give you a free hit, but good survivors will keep running and gain distance on you as you put your hatchet away. Being unpredictable is the best way to play pallets. Sometimes you do throw a hatchet, and sometimes you just randomly swing through it. Most people do not expect a huntress to just go crazy and melee through pallets like the rest of the killers, because usually she doesn't have to. Swinging through pallets as huntress has gotten me hits on the best survivors I've ever seen, because it's very unexpected until they know that you're going to mix things up. Then once you've got it in their head that you melee through pallets, then you actually do throw a hatchet instead. It's a guessing game that's controlled by you, and that's a good thing. As a quick note, some pallet loops, like pretty much all of the rock loops on Shelter Woods, have walls so close together that you should pretty much never attempt to hatchet throw at the pallet. Unfortunately, the, you know, maps like Shelter Woods, they're the worst Huntress maps in the game because you just have to get looped around every rock tile, just kind of like you're a hag. Now, there are a few pallets that give a guaranteed hatchet regardless of whether or not they drop the pallet. Pretty much anything with a straight, narrow choke point are free hatches regardless of what the survivor does. Now, if there's a survivor camping a pallet because you're too close to be looped anymore, you have a few options. First, just melee through it. It's extremely fast and almost has to be predicted to stun you before the swing connects, and it's less expected because you're a huntress. Additionally, you can ready a hatchet and move right up to the pallet, and then immediately back up. This baits the survivor to drop the pallet while you back out of the stun range, giving you a free hit. Again, these are options that you control. The survivor basically has to just guess which one you're going to do, and if they delay too long making a decision, you just throw the ready hatchet at them while they're deciding what to do. Also, a huge tip for going against Huntress, forget about stun points. Just drop the pallet early before she has a shot on you if you want to live, 
Don't even entertain the possibility of her playing any mind games on you. For example, if you loop very efficiently as if a Huntress were a normal killer, you'd be about, a, you know, around this distance. However, at this distance, you no longer have any options against Huntress. I'm so close that if I ready and throw a hatchet, you can't line a sight me fast enough, and if you drop the pallet, it's another free hit. Never be this close or you will absolutely go down. So this next part is kind of a random list of things you should know, but they're too vague to really fit in a one topic. For example, self-care actually extends your hitbox as a survivor. If you see a survivor self-carrying, their hitbox extends as if they were standing up still, meaning you can hit the air above their head and down them. Additionally, they also get wider, meaning you can aim at the air to the left or right of their feet and still get the hit. Why is it like this? I don't fucking, I don't know, behavior, that's why. So if you see a survivor self-carrying with a nurse's calling, chances are you can telepathically damage them because the game is stupid. Next, always reload hatchets before picking someone up if you can. This way, instead of hooking them, getting barbecue and chili, and then reloading while auras fade away, you can begin immediately chasing or start chucking hatchets while they're still highlighted. Next, if you know a survivor you're chasing is good, occasionally mix it up between full charge and just immediately throwing a hatchet at close range. They might predict a full charge and start juking a little too late. Big maps suck for Huntress. If you get Torment Creek, Shelter Woods, Pell Rose, things like that, you're just probably not going to do great. It's more on the map than anything, so don't let it make you feel bad. Now, if you're not able to get to a survivor before he's in a pallet loop and you have no more hatchets, just give up the chase. Huntress does not do chases without hatchets unless they're in the open and nearby. You don't even have to hit the hatchets is the thing. The threat of just simply having them changes how the survivor operates and limits the things they can do. Now, if people start to know you as a good Huntress, you can actually mind game them by making them think you're out of hatchets. Just run up and melee them and continue chasing them as if you have none. If you convince them, they might take a window vault or drop a pallet for a free hit. Again, this really only works if they know you're a good Huntress because it preys on their knowledge of you wanting a melee hatchet instead of just melee swinging. Other than that, that's pretty much all there is to the Huntress. It's all about refining these things and getting better at, you know, each individual thing in here. Hitting melee hatchet should be the first thing you learn that's the most important, then you can start moving on to the fancy stuff. Other than that, though, the whole core of Huntress is just getting them into the open. Sometimes you have to get loop to get them into the open, and that's just something you have to deal with, but once you get them into the open, Huntress is one of the scariest killers in the game. She's one of the most rewarding killers in the game, and if you stick with her, although her skill cap is fairly high, you will absolutely have a great time. And She's one of the few killers in the game that can stomp on rank 1 survive with friends without any trouble, and you can't really mess around with her, which is what I love about her. So that is about it. If you have any more questions, I probably missed a couple of little things. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments or just come watch my stream. I'm usually playing Huntress every single day. So thank you for watching, guys, and hopefully I will see you next time.